In section 3.3, we discuss the Laplace equation with azimuthal symmetry. We know that the associated Legendre equation was equal to this, and our potential phi was depending on the azimuthal component, which is which is phi as a function of phi and this was associated with a constant m. Now if our potential will be azimuthally symmetric means it is having no dependence on phi then we will have our constant m equal to zero means around the z-axis our potential is not depending on the rotation wise so our potential will only be a function of r and theta in this situation our equation will reduce to the our equation will reduce to the Legendre polynomial and we will have d over dx 1 minus x square dp over dx plus l into l plus 1 p equal to 0. In this situation, we will have our solution to this one we have already derived that phi is a function of r and theta and this was summation on L running from 0 to infinity and the radial component solution was one constant AL r to the power L plus another constant BL and r to the power minus L plus 1. So minus L plus 1 and the is the zenith angle component means the theta component was the Legendre polynomial solution is p l of cos theta. So we are having this is the solution and now when we will have a zenithal symmetry then we will have to work out this solution. To work out this solution, we will have to find the value of AL, the value of BL, depending on the situation that whether we are inside the geometry or outside the geometry. And we will have to determine the PLs, that which Legendre polynomials are contributing to it. And in order to understand all this, we will have to consider some examples. So the example one is, example one is that if we consider a sphere of radius A, we consider a sphere of radius A on which potential is some specified function of polar angle theta. So on this sphere we are having the potential V of theta and we assume no free charges. When there are no free charges so it means we will have well defined potential at the origin and we will have to determine the potential inside the sphere, the potential at the origin. So our potential is now, we will have to determine V, or is V denoted phi there? So it's the same thing whether we write phi or we write V. So we will determine the potential at origin. It will be a well-defined potential 
And now coming back to our solution, that what will our solution will take place. Now is I will be uh, let me write the solution in this form that phi of r theta summation on L and A L R to the power L plus B L and R to the power L plus 1 this L is here and P L of cos theta. Now look at this one that when r is growing means when r is increasing then our potential means this portion is increasing and when r is decreasing like here our potential is growing so these two constant we will have to decide that so if I consider a sphere such that the sphere radius is A and I consider the x, y and z x is here and the radius of the sphere is A now at the origin I am having some finite potential which is V of theta. So we will have the when I will go outside of the sphere then potential is supposed to decrease means when R is increasing then potential should decrease and here is R is increasing then potential is increasing so outside we will have a l equal to zero while b l will not be zero when we are inside then the b l should be zero because here it is r l plus one is we are decreasing r this the potential is growing so for the this is for the inside this will remain with us and this is for finite for outside so we will say that is we are calculating an our problem for the inside in on the surface so we will take dl equal to zero so for the potential on the sphere surface and inside BL is zero and our phi which is R of theta is equal to summation on L and AL R to the power L and PL cos of theta this will be our solution to work out now when we will be at the surface of the sphere so phi r will be equal to a and theta so we will have summation on l now summation on l means that l runs from 0 to infinity and this is a l and R will become A and L and P L of cos theta. So we are having this is the solution but now we will have to and this is of course equal to V of theta. Now our V of theta is just the expansion of this relation with two undetermined constant which is a l and a to the power l so we will have to find these now as i know that when i considered in the previous lecture the solution was that u l of x that we derived 
was equal to 2L plus 1 by 2 square root and P L of X and it was forming an orthonormal set. So in order to determine A L from here, we will have to consider inner product with this and keeping in mind that x equal cos theta and dx equal minus sine theta d theta. So let's consider the product P L prime of x with v of theta and this is equal to summation on L and A L A to the power L and then we will have P L prime this one and P L so this will give us summation on L and A L a to the power L and 2 over 2 L plus 1 delta L L prime. When L will be equal to L prime, we will get 1 and when this will not be equal to, we will get 0. So from here, I can write that A L comes out to be 2 L plus 1 divided by 2 and a to the power L P L and V of theta. So now I can write this in the form of a product uh, in the form of integral. So this implies that this is equal 2L plus 1 over 2AL and integral from 0 to pi because this is the limit of the zenith angle d theta and sine theta PL of cos theta from here PL of cos theta PL is this one and V of theta so in order to find the AL coefficient we will have to evaluate this integral now V of theta will be some specified value the associated uh, means the number of polynomials we will calculate from here and then we will integrate with this and as we get the value of AL that will come here and this will give us the solution of this problem. Now let me consider another example and this is example 2 is discussed in J.D. Jackson and example 2 is the example of hemispheres in different potentials. So we are having two hemispheres hemispheres at different potentials so plus minus V. Now the geometry of the problem is such that our function V of theta is equal to plus V to plus V and this is in the range when theta is from 0 to pi by 2. When theta is from 0 to pi by 2, we are having plus V on the hemisphere and when theta is from pi by 2 to pi 
then we are having minus we are having minus v on the hemi sphere so if i consider a sphere and even i can write the limits for cos theta as well means this is for theta and if i want to write for cos theta then this will be equal to i can write that let me reverse them so theta is greater means when cos theta cos 0 is 1 so we will have here 1 and cos pi by 2 is 0 so from 0 to 1 for cos theta and similarly the second hemisphere i can write that this is equal from cos pi is minus 1 and cos pi by 2 is 0 so we are having these limits for cos theta now the situation is that we are having a sphere and that sphere we are splitting into two hemispheres so it's like this that we are splitting it in two hemisphere this is the first hemisphere and this is the second hemisphere so we are having plus v here and minus v here and we are about to calculate the potential at a point which is at the center of the sphere